real quick here so I don't forget like I did last time. Um, and we'll go ahead and get started just because we've got a huge agenda here and I don't want to uh, totally run out of time. I hope you all are doing well. Can everyone hear me okay? Can I just get a thumbs up or something? Okay, good, great. Okay, well, I think there are a couple new people on the phone today. So we're gonna go ahead and, and start off with introductions as we usually do. Um, I'm Serena Wiesner with Osteoarthritis Action Alliance and I oversee our work with the Walk With Ease portal. Um, and I'm just gonna kind of go through the list as I have it, if you just wanna give your name and your organization um, and maybe just how long you've been using the portal just so that people can get a sense of that. Um, so first person on my list is Caitlin. Good morning or good afternoon, I guess it is now. Um, this is Caitlin Gurney. I'm from the New York State Department of Health Arthritis Program. And we've been using the portal for about a year and a half now. I'm starting to lose track, but something like that. I totally hear you. I'm losing track too. Thanks, Caitlin. Uh, Allison Harris. Hi, hopefully you all can hear me. Um, I'm Allison Harris. I'm with OSU Extension in Oregon. Um, and we've been live in the portal for about a week. So I'm the newbie. <laughs> Great. Good to have you here. Uh, Dr. Welk. Uh, yeah, hi, I'm Greg Welk, professor at Iowa State, and I work with the Iowa Hub here, the state hub in collaboration with CHP Community, and we've been using the portal about a year now, maybe. Great, thank you. And Amy Ellings? Hi, I'm Amy Ellings, I use she, her pronouns, Washington State Department of Health, and we've been using the portal for about a month, although we used an earlier version of the portal, but this version, um, we're pretty new at it. Um, let's see, Isla Alvarez. Oh, it's Isla. Oh, Isla, but... I'm sorry. I know it's Isla. okay. That's why. I... <laughs> it's okay. No one gets it right, so I, I completely understand. <laughs> but yeah, my name is Isla. I actually just started working recently here two two um two months ago in the cancer arthritis program, and we will be using the portal this upcoming year for the for our employees uh, state program. Awesome. Great. Uh, Jasmine. Hi there, Jasmine Franco from the Rhode Island Department of Health. We've now been using the portal for just about a year and a half as well. Great. And Karen? Hi, I'm Karen Leinbach with the Oklahoma State Department of Health. Um, I think we've had the portal a couple of years, but with COVID, it was really hard to get it going. Um, we're working on portal renewal right now, and we have seven people across the state of Oklahoma that are about to start their certified leader programs. And we're hoping to get some walking groups going this year. Great. And Kimberly Mosley. Hi, my name is Kimberly Mosley and I work at North Carolina Center for Health and Wellness. And I'm still fairly new to my role, but I believe we've been using the portal for a while now. Great, yep, definitely. One of, one of our early adopters for sure. Um, Kirsten from my office is on. Hey, everybody. It's good to see everyone today. As Serena said, she and I work closely together at the Mothership at the OA Action Alliance, and we're super excited that all of you have adopted and kept up with us and worked with us through some bumps and growth and all kinds of things. We so appreciate your patience and your feedback and, and you know, the experience that you have. And you'll see me for billing purposes, contracting, getting you all on board. You might also see our colleague, Emma Dean. Uh, her name may come up in the mix as well, but thanks everybody. Hello. Thank you. Michael Dunn. Hi, uh, Michael Dunn at uh, the South Dakota State University Population Health Evaluation Center, contracted with um, uh, Better Choices, Better Health South Dakota. And uh, I think we've been using the portal for several months now. Great. And uh, your colleague over there as well, Nikki. Hello, everybody. I'm Nikki Prash with SDSU Extension in South Dakota. And as Michael mentioned, we, we purchased the license last fall, but just this January, we offered one or two workshops and we're hoping to use the portal more as we kind of get going. We've had a lot of changes happening. So we were excited for the potential of the portal. 
<laughs> yes. Lots of changes, lots of changes everywhere. I know how that goes. Um, how about Sarah King? Hello, everyone. My name is Sarah King, and I'm one of the assistant directors at Clemson Staff Ed um, down lo located in South Carolina. We have been using the portal for about almost a year now um, and have really enjoyed it. And it's helped us connect with some further partners within the state that we wouldn't have previously. So thank you. Awesome. Great. And Nadia? Hey everyone, I'm Nadia Mazza. I work with Kimberly at the North Carolina Center for Health and Wellness, um, and we're housed at UNC Asheville. Um, and we have been using the portal since 2020. We started with Portal 1.0 and then quickly signed on to Portal 2.0 as soon as it became available. Great. And Shanetta. I don't know if you all can see me, but I'm Shanetta. Yeah. Okay, I'm with the Arkansas Department of Health, and I believe we um, purchased the portal spring of 2021 before I came on board, mm -hmm. and now we are slowly trying to get um, people to utilize it <laughs> for, I think, a couple of months. Yeah, great. Okay, did I miss anyone? Uh, Jenny, see you on my list. Jenny Kirk Hi. Sorry, I'm joining a few minutes late. No, that's go. okay. Where uh, where are you located? I'm in South Dakota. South Dakota. Okay. Yeah. So you're part of the South Dakota team. Great. Good to have you here. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh-huh. Okay. I think I got it. Oh, Teresa in Minnesota just joined. Teresa, you want to say hi real quick? Sure. Hello, everyone. I'm Teresa. I'm with the diabetes program in Minnesota. Great. And kind of moonlighting as part of arthritis work, I guess. Yeah, both. <laughs> I should have said diabetes and arthritis. I'm okay. sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Well, it's great to have y'all here. Um, as y'all know, we do these uh, quarterly calls primarily to kind of try and keep everyone on the same page with any updates that are going on with the portal. Um, to highlight your successes, to talk through any challenges you might be having, and um, something new that I'm, I added to the agenda for this call was kind of a wish list. Um, so we'll get to that, that piece as well. So in the future, I think we'll, we'll kind of keep that um, on the agenda, um, but that's something new for, for this version. So I'm going to go ahead and start off where I usually do with it, which is with any updates to the portal. One of the things that kind of happened before the last call was that we added a poll feature into the administrative function. And I wanted to just kind of review that for all of you, because I know some of you are really new to the portal and are just getting started and you're actually launching to pretty big um, target audiences, and I want to make sure that you have all the, the settings set up correctly um, when you do these big launches. So let me um, pull up my portal real quick. <clears throat> okay, so what I'm referring to is right here in step three, the create groups. The way we had originally had this set up was that you would have to assign books to um, different groups by number. So if you had kind of your main rolling group um, up here, hang on, I'm, I'm trying to get my list of participants out of the way, there we go. So if you had your main rolling group up here, and then you had additional kind of enhanced groups down here below, um, you would have to assign a number of books from your book inventory, which is right up here. 
But um, what we found out was happening from some of our partners, and that's why it's really essential for us all to be communicating about these kinds of things, is that um, some people were maybe assigning, you know, a certain number of books to one group and then another amount to another group. And they wanted um, and they would run out in one group and have extra in another or they just, it wasn't possible because they had so many groups to possibly divvy up their inventory between all those groups. So I wanted to make sure that you all understood how that, that um, works. So as you can see up here, this is our, our book inventory here at the OA Action Alliance. So we have 34 books, print books and zero digital books. So I have this set up so that if I go here, you can see that I have both the um, physical and the print books being pulled from this main inventory for this first kind of ongoing rolling group. If I wanted to change that, I could just unclick the pull and I could assign a certain number of books. Now the portal won't let me assign more books than I have. So if you want to assign a specific number of books to each group, just keep in mind that you have to, that the total that you come up with between all of your groups has to equal the number that is in your inventory. And I also wanted to note that you can change that at any time if that's where you end up going with this. So. If you have pull, you cannot then assign a number to the physical books if you have that enabled. Um, if you disable it, then that's when you are able to um, assign a different number of, of books to those groups. I also wanted to highlight here, remember that if you allow people to decline a book, then they, that is essentially saying that they will get the book from in another way. Maybe they'll get it because their employer has given them a copy or um, they're getting a copy from the library or maybe they've taken the program before and they already have the book. So that if you have that enabled, they will be able to select that as an option when they're registering. If you have allow to buy enabled, then that will show up as an option when all the books are gone. So once all your inventory, whether it's print or digital is gone, then allowing them to buy a book will keep the portal open. It will allow them to register through the portal. You'll collect the data. They'll be able to use the participant tools in the portal, um, but they will then be given a link where they are directed to either purchase the Kindle version from Amazon or the print version with the discount code from the Arthritis Foundation. So if you do not want them to buy their own, just make sure that that is, is unchecked. And this way, if you have it set up like this, then when all of your inventory of books is gone, then you will go to a waiting list. And essentially what the waiting list is, is they will put in their email or be asked to put in their email address and then you can notify them when you have more books available. And at that point, then they'll go through the full registration process. So if you don't have books available, they won't be able to register at all. So I will pause there and ask if there are any questions on this piece. Y'all good? Okay, I'm gonna take silences meaning, and I can't see everyone. So, okay, Nadia, I see a thumbs up. Okay, good. And take silence as meaning everybody's on board. So that's really essential to have that set up cor correctly. If you don't have any books assigned and you don't have the poll checked, then the 
it, the only thing that they'll be able to do is um, go onto your waiting list. Or um, if you just somehow have allowed to buy checked, but don't have anything else checked or allowed to decline checked, but nothing else checked, then you can see how it can get confusing. So just make sure that if you are wanting to pull from your main inventory that you go ahead and, and select that option in there. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and go back here. So the other thing that is new is with, um, there's two items with the data that's new, that are new. Um, first, we have been able to create a system so that if you, for some reason, need access to all the identifiable information, so you need um, the, the questionnaire reports with all of the registration and post-program survey data next to the name and email address and all the identifiable information, we can do that for you, um, but we will have to have a signed data use agreement that lays out kind of these spe specifics in that agreement. Um, so if that's something that you need for um, your reporting or research or quality improvement projects, then just let us know and we can set that up for you. On the flip side, we also know that there are some states that absolutely do not want to have access to any identifiable information. So they don't even want to have emails or um, you know, first and last name. So we've been able to kind of create a way to turn off all the identifiable information um, if you do not want that. We're still working on creating a system to do that for the walking reports, because as you may remember, the walking reports, okay, I'll just pull up walking minutes, um, they do have names on them, okay? So if that's something that you wanna chat with us about, about either more data or less data, just let us know because we've, um, we've got that worked out. Also wanted to let you know that we are in the home stretch with Workshop Wizard. So I know a couple of you use Workshop Wizard um, and some of you may be looking into utilizing it for your data management system. Um, uh, right before our developer, um, went out of town for a little bit. She got all her side of things done. We're just waiting on Workshop Wizard to finish up um, with their import function. And then um, we should be able to directly connect you all if you're using Workshop Wizard. Any questions about that? Okay. Quiet group today, Monday, feeling Monday-ish. Okay, next thing I wanted to let you know is that we now have the preview function for participants. So <coughs> if they get done with their registration and um, they don't yet have their book, but they wanna kind of see what the portal's like, there are now going to be, two, there are now two blue buttons on that kind of registration confirmation page. And the first one says, I have my book, I'm ready to start. And the second one says, I'm not ready to start the program, but I want a preview. And so they can click on that and they can preview each week of the portal. Um, they can kind of see what's expected and how the program is laid out. Um, before they actually have their book and before they're ready to get started. So I wanted to share that because I know that some people were going ahead and, um, you know, they're curious. So they click the blue button, even though they don't have their book. And what happens when they do that is that initiates the email campaign. So that's our way of saying, okay, this person has started the program. And we, that's when we send the first email and then every email after that is based on the first click. 
So if they didn't have their book and they went ahead and clicked that, then kind of their email sequence would be off from what they were actually experiencing in the program. Okay, any questions about that? Okay, hope I'm making sense on all this. Okay, so a couple of things that are in the works. Obviously, you all know that we've been working really hard on the Spanish portal. So what this is, is a translation of the current English portal, but it's for the, the Spanish version of the program, which is called Camina con Gusto. And Camina con Gusto, um, the book, as some of you know, is um, much more expensive than the English version. So we have opted in the Spanish portal to just have the ebook as an option for the Spanish portal. Um, so anyone who registers for the Spanish portal will just have the option of selecting the ebook and it will work exactly like the English portal. So if any of you who are um, currently offering the English are interested in offering the Spanish version, um, just connect with us. I think it should be ready uh, to start kind of on a slow rollout in the next couple of weeks, um, but it's, it's looking really good. We've had a couple Spanish speakers go through it and give us some input. And um, I think it'll be, it'll be really helpful, um, I hope. For, for reaching out to that population. A kind of along those same lines, we're also developing tools and resources related to um, specifically osteoarthritis education, um, education around you know, management, prevention, um, self-management of it in daily life, physical activity, how osteoarthritis kind of um, can be worsened by certain, um, you know, different forms of work. Um, we found obviously that people who have any sort of repetitive motions are going to have more of a problem with osteoarthritis. And that seems to be very common in the Spanish speaking um, population. So we are also developing those tool, tools and resources to kind of help support the Camino con Gusto portal but also as an additional feature. So if any of you are um, reaching out to the Spanish speaking population and are interested in finding out about those tools and resources, just let us know because we can, we'll obviously put a blast out there when they're ready. Um, and we hope that they're useful to all of you in that work. Um, another thing that will be going on, uh, hopefully in the next couple months, hopefully ready, early August is the text messaging feature. So this will allow participants to select to be notified by either email or text message or both. So for those weekly engagement emails, we will come up with shortened um, text messages that will be sent out to people to remind them to log into the portal and maybe give them an encouraging message or something via text. Um, so that's going to be coming out. Also, we're working on a feature that will allow people to restart the portal again. Right now, they can, they can do that at any time because they always have access to their portal. Um, they can just log in and go in and delete all the data that they have already entered for goals and tracking. And then re-enter. Um, but what we haven't figured out is how to keep the first set of data and um, then have a new layer on top of it of the next time they participate in the program. Also, you know, if they participate in the program one year and maybe they do the program two or three years down the line, we want to have the ability to collect the baseline and post-program data for all of, all of those time periods, because we know that um, the baseline data, the second time they take part in the program 
may not be the same baseline data as the first time they took part in the program. Um, so I anticipate that that feature won't be ready until probably end of summer, early fall. And then um, I also wanted to share with you that we have, um, as kind of part of a mini project here at the OA Action Alliance, we did a, a follow-up survey um, to people who had registered through our portal, the New York State portal, and the North Carolina portal. Um, just to kind of get a sense of why they signed up with the portal and um, whether or not they use the portal. Um, I don't really have enough time to walk through the, um, the actual results right now, but I'm going to send each of you a PDF of what we have learned. Um, also wanted to let you know that I'm working with Dr. Welk and one of his colleagues on um, in including some of the questions and some of the evaluation that they're doing as well, so that hopefully we can get a bit more of a robust um, response, because it is amazing. We sent this survey out to over a thousand people and we only got 23 people to respond. Um, and we even had an incentive of a drawing for a $50 gift card. Um, so we really just, um, are kind of shocked <laughs> and saddened that there there wasn't a lot. Um, it was like a two minute survey, so we, right. we kind of thought there would be um, a higher a higher response. <clears throat> um, okay, so that's where I am right now on updates. I'll pause there and see if anybody has questions or comments. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, I don't know how many of you will be able to access this through your, um, your systems, but, and I see there's a question in the chat, so I'm going to hang on and put this link in here for you all. So you can see that. And then let's see, Shanetta says, can they preview more than once? Yes, Shanetta, they can preview um, the portal multiple times. Um, and then once, once they're ready to begin, that's when it kind of starts. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hey, Serena, I had a question about the Spanish portal. Yeah. Um, so just so I understand it, even if, uh, let's say our state wanted to invest in physical copies of the Spanish version of the books. Um, it sounds like the portal is only supporting the digital books at this time. So it's so the option isn't available to purchase the um, the physical copies as of now. Right. Okay. Yep. Yep. We you would just have the ebook, and then if you wanted to enable the decline, I'm getting it from somewhere else. Then you would be able to ship them out, um, okay. or hand them out to people. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, because we figured it would be, um, with shipping and handling, it would be about $20 per person for the print books. And um, just seemed really cost prohibitive to set that up. But, um, you know, if demand grows in the future, that's certainly something that we could rethink. Okay, well, I will go ahead to our new category, which is the portal ideas or wish list. Um, so I have, I've kind of been keeping a running list of some ideas that different portal partners have shared would be, you know, great additions or features or changes to the portal. Um, so I'll just kind of go through a couple of them. And then if you all have any ideas right now, I would love to hear them. Uh, the first one is, as many of you know, there is a, um, and I should, I will go ahead and log in as my persona here. 
there is a little part of the portal for participants where there's a currently there is a picture a still image on it um so i'm just logged in here i'm on week one so right now there's a still image um we will be actually restarting or um, including the videos in here um, as i mentioned on our last call we had um, uploaded all the videos and then uh, we needed to take them down um, to make sure that we didn't ruin some research that some folks were doing so um, we are now that research our data collection has been completed. We are actually going to put the videos back in for everyone. But um, we know that the kind of the target audience for the videos seems to skew a little bit to the older adults and maybe doesn't have the exact messaging for, say, um, younger working populations um, so, or people who are working to pre prevent arthritis or maybe people who don't even have arthritis but are just wanting to do the walk with these program. So the wish list is to essentially have a library of options so that you as a portal partner can customize what shows up in that box for your participants. If you want it to be a um, uh, you know we'll have maybe three or four options of a still photo and then maybe um, an two or three options of a video if you wanted that. Um, the videos right now, we don't have the funding to complete them, but I know Dr. Welk has some that he has created for the work they're doing in Iowa, um, kind of in the worksite wellness sphere. So that might be something that we could add to that, that kind of option. Um, just to kind of allow for a greater customization for you um, and your target audiences. Um, I don't know how complex we'll be able to get with that feature. I don't know if we'll be able to allow you all to assign different pictures based on different groups because I know that some of you work with employers and some of you work with area agencies on aging. And so for those of you who are doing kind of a really broad spectrum of target audiences, I don't know that we'll be able to allow you to select one for each and every group, but it is on our wish, wish list for sure. Uh, Dr. Welk, was there anything else you wanted to add in there about that piece? Uh, no, but I just added a comment or in the chat to say how that that would be fabulous to have that. Um, so, and I've mentioned to you, Serena, that we, you know, I've done similar work with web portals, and I know the challenge of either you know locking it in or making it custom. And as soon as you open the door, it's challenging. But um, if your web developers can do that, it, it gives the users the, the autonomy to um, customize their intervention or program for their audience, and so. Um, hopefully that is, you know, can evolve over time. It can start simple and just maybe be, you know, letting a, the videos be different and then evolve over time once your web developers get a handle on, uh, on what that changes in their system. But yeah, I think it's, it's a really great step to enable a little bit of the customization that we all kind of need to make it look personal to the agency so it's not static. Um, but you know, I, I also mentioned we'll be happy to share our videos so they could be, you know, up on the, the menu and people could use them. So when we're making ours, we're gonna try to make them a little bit more generic so that they don't, you know, look specific to one group. But as you said, I we're mainly trying to have separate ones for kind of our community groups that are, you know, older populations and our worksite groups, which tend to be younger. So thanks. Yes, yes absolutely. Great, thank you. That would yeah. be wonderful because I know these videos can get expensive and complex. So um, anytime you know we can share share the wealth, that's great. Yeah, and the, I'll add one more thought: the, the videos that we're developing are, are trying to be guided by um, theories related to habit formation. So they're not just videos; they're uh, kind of theoretically based videos that capture the how a person creates and forms habits. So we're somewhat building that into our version. And again, we're happy to 
have that be available or shared down the road. That would be wonderful, right? Yeah. Thank you. Excellent. Maybe you can work on having people habitually check their emails for any surveys. Or... Yeah, isn't isn't that crazy? Yeah, to, to get a to get an email to, or to have somebody complete a survey, it's impossible. Yeah, it is. It's amazing, and you know, it's funny because I just went through a whole um, you know training on um, you know HIPAA and and phishing and all this online safety and everything. So I get it. I mean you're you're told over and over again not to click on links in an email and so i i get it but it's just it makes it hard for those of us who are just trying to improve our services and programs so um what one other thing interestingly enough um that's come up since we launched the ebook is that some people have gotten the print book and wanted the ebook later on and some people have gotten the ebook and wanted the print book and so um, I'm trying to figure out how to allow for switching um, and, you know, whether or not that is even an option. I think it would probably be an option if somebody has selected an ebook and prefers a print. Um, I think that we can, there will be a way for us to kind of turn off the ebook and then send them a print book. Um, I just don't know about that quite yet, but that's come up quite a bit over the past couple months. Um, and then allowing a longer word, word limit for the group details. So that would be um, kind of on the, let's see, log out here again and see if I can get back to, I don't think we have any groups, but basically um, being able to customize more around what's said here in um, the different groups. So right now you're really limited to how much how much you can put in there and it's kind of hard to speak in you know short acronym you know <laughs> to try and get get across what group is what group. So um, we'll work on we're hopefully working on that pretty quick too. So just kind of off the top of your head, anybody have any wish list items um, that you can think of now? I mean, feel free to share them in the chat. Yeah, Caitlin says a longer word limit would be great. I thought of something. Um, it actually came up in a conversation the other day. Yeah. Allowing, um, we've just ran into, and we haven't had that many workshops in the portal, but, um, you know, say we only get a few signed up, but we want to delay starting it a week or two. So if there would ever be the capability of like restricting when they can say they received their book, so we could kind of postpone receiving the emails to coordinate with whatever our six week dates would be, would be a great, a great thing. I don't know how easy that is, but just something I've noticed. Yes. And actually, um, I do have that on, on my longer list of wish list items is that if you're having an enhanced group, um, you kind of want everyone to start on or around the same date. And so it would be, um, either, not even requiring them to click the start the program button, but pushing the emails out on a specific date, because we want, even if they don't, if they've got their book, they're ready to start the program, but they don't want to use the portal at all. Um, but, you know, our partners still want them to get those weekly e emails then a system that would allow us to just go ahead and tag them in the email on a specific day so that everyone in that group gets the email starting on, on the same day. Great. Anything, any other wish list items? How long does it take to receive the print book? Um, so Teresa, we send them out via media mail and it's usually sent the day of or the day after that after somebody registers. Um, so if they have completed their registration and they have selected a print book, uh, it's usually within five to seven business days. So I was just looking in the portal and there's one person who just emailed me actually about 
not having her book yet and she registered on the 9th and I was looking in there and I didn't see the data that had been sent. So I can follow up with you, but. You yeah, up. did she complete it? I think that's the biggest barrier we have is if somebody ordered the print book and they completed step one, but they did not complete step two of the registration. And so they technically have not registered. And so that might be the problem. Can you clarify for me what step two of the registration is? Yes, so right here is the, here I'm gonna go ahead and, so this is step one. This is basically putting in your email, your email address and username and your password and everything, and then putting in your address. Step two is actually the baseline data collection. So it's all your questions, your demographic questions, activity questions, um, health questions, all of that is step two. Okay, thank you. And um, let me show you just while we're here. Uh, let me log in this person. So you can see on your user's report, um, registration right here. So if you ever want to add more columns or less columns to your report, you can do this. So make sure that you have the registration completed um, clicked so that you have that column. So here's, here's the column here. Um, and find that person here. And if they don't have a date in their registration column, then they have not completed it. So this person, for example, they thought they ordered a book through GSG. All these people thought that they ordered books, but they didn't complete the registration. So they actually did not register. Okay. Okay. Um, any other wish list ideas or anything? I was thinking it might be helpful with, for data collection. Um, I recently downloaded a report on some of the users just to look at some um, inf information with a particular group. And I noticed that, and this might just be something that I'm like a user error on my part, but I noticed that it looks like if they did complete an evaluation, that'll show up like as a totally separate row mm -hmm. in the spreadsheet. And I'm wondering if there'd be a way to match the evaluation to the person so that it would just be one, each row would represent one person. Cause sometimes, cause that got a little bit confusing for me uh, looking at it. Um, when partners are asking even something as simple as like, oh, how many people signed up for this group or, and then, uh, so I got a little bit um, stumbled by that. And I was thinking maybe there's a way to, to fix that. Right, so I think this, this is what you're referring to, right? So on your questionnaire data report, it's all de-identified unless you chat with us and we give you the identified information. But for each participant ID, there is, the registration row, and then there's the evaluation row. Um, so we could certainly, um, I can talk to the developer because you're not the only one who has mentioned that that would be nice to be able to, um, to see maybe, like you said, some of these questions on here would not be, um, even asked in the, in the evaluation, like you're not going to ask gender and all these questions again, but you're going to ask this, your health today. So you could have a column that says health today, you know, registration and then health today evaluation. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I think that'd be a little bit easier to look at if possible. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, kind of along with that, would you want to just be able to see them separated too? Like, would you just want to see the baseline data? 
Um, <clears throat> I don't think I would need that for any reason, as long as I could access both the baseline and the evaluation um, and yep. looking at it all together, I can't see a reason why I would need it se separated, at least in the portal. Because then I, you know, after the spreadsheets download, if I wanted to separate it from there, I could. Okay. Okay. All right. Great. I just have to make notes here real quick. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, let's see. Let's see some chat here. Allison may have missed this. Is there a way to prompt people to finish registering if they don't? Um, it looks like a couple of people didn't complete the registration. The only way to do that right now, Allison, um, is to to manually go in and email them and say, it looks like you started the registration, but you didn't complete it. Um, you know, this is just a reminder to to finish up the registration. There's two parts. The first, you finish the first, but now you need to log in and finish the second. Um, Shanetta, I want to share for those who aren't started with their portal yet. Um, uh, data we're collecting, it might require it. Yes, so IRB. Yes, so we at OA Action Alliance have an IRB exemption for the portal, but you as individual partners um, may need an IRB review. And if you need us to um, you know, submit anything or you need a copy of our exemption or any of that, just let, let us know. Um, but our exemption does not um, kind of carry over to all of you as partners. Thanks, Shanetta. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> uh -huh. um, okay, well, if you all think of anything that you would love to see, um, I have that wish list and I'm happy to add ideas. Um, basically the way we kind of, um, kind of move forward with some of those is if it's something that keeps coming up over and over again, that helps us prioritize. So even if you think somebody might have said it already, or I've mentioned it here, um, let me know again, because when I start to hear a problem over and over again, that's when I can, um, kind of justify, you know, this expense to change things um, on our end or to invest in them for the portal. Um, okay, so also wanted to give an opportunity for all of you to share. I just wanted to um, start off, of course, with um, some testimonials that I've linked here. This is in a Google Doc. So if you don't have, um, if you don't have access to Google Docs, let me know and I can send it to you in a Word document or something like that. Um, but as you're doing any sort of marketing, I always think it's great to have real life testimonials and Nadia's gathered some great ones from a survey that she has done. Um, so she's willing to share them here. And I really don't think it matters whether someone participated in North Carolina or New York or to Timbuktu, you know, whatever. I think that these, some of these testimonials are really gold. So would highly encourage you to use them. Um, Nadia, did you want to say anything else about those? No, uh, yeah, thank you for um, organizing those and sharing them with the group. I hope they're helpful to someone. Great. So this is kind of a time, you know, we've got about nine minutes left. Anybody have questions for the group? Um, I know there's a lot of new people on who are just getting launched. Um, any questions you have getting up and going? Anything you want to celebrate? Uh, 
Oh, I guess I'll share, Sharina, as far as like a question. I know I had reached out to you. I'm always emailing you <laughs> um, the other day about the evaluation questions, because we're trying to just make sure we're asking the right questions for the pre and the post. And I know you had mentioned as far as the evaluation, just check with our CDC project officer to make sure um, if there's certain information we need from the progress reports, because you all really don't need that data. Mm -mm. so that was something new I learned (laughs) yeah we um so we don't have any access to any of your data um if we needed it we would have to ask you for it and you would have to send it to us or you'd have to give us a um you know a written okay to ask our developer to access it so the developer is the only one who has access to all of the data um And so we don't, you know, if we're going to conduct any sort of, um, you know, analysis or anything on any of this data, we have to ask you all first, yeah, because it's your data. Well, I want to do a shout out to the folks in Minnesota. I think that they had something like five, over 500 people register in a matter of a couple weeks um, when they did a a recent um, campaign. So I don't know, Teresa, if you have anything to share. I know you were going to kind of um, gather some lessons learned and share them, but any kind of highlights or? Yeah, you know, I can say we're learning lessons and we did look at our demographic data a little over a weekend. Um, we're using a traffic-based marketing campaign with a communications consultant and essentially the type of person who's clicking on your social media post is gonna get more messages and the messages that get more action are gonna get repeated or promoted. And so we were start not, starting to get a demographic we didn't want, it accelerates as you go. So we shifted a little bit and it seems like it's helping. So we're still learning lessons, but we've had a really good response. Interesting. Yeah. That's great. So it's all, is it um, primarily Facebook posts or are you using a different platform? Face, Facebook. Yeah. Facebook. And there's some real limitations to what you can promote demographically. So you have to be a little bit creative to try to reach your priority populations. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's great. Okay. Well, congratulations on that for sure. And Amy Ellings in Washington had a couple hundred people sign up within a week too. So that was pretty amazing. So I had a quick question. This is Karen from Oklahoma. Uh Um, for anyone that's been doing this, do you guys have tips on keeping people engaged? Because we've done this a couple of times and people register, they get the book and then they may do like one week and then they drop off. And so that's why we're trying some like actual trainers that can like stay on top of them. But I'm curious if there's any tips that you guys have for us keeping them engaged because we wanna, you know, make sure that they're getting healthy and using funding for this appropriately and everything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Serena, I'll jump in. This is Greg Welk. Um, yeah. The one um, idea we've implemented recently is just a simple phone call. It seems so um, outdated, but with uh, some of our older participants, just the act of making a call and saying, do you have any questions about accessing the portal or using it? And the, the person on the other line would say, oh, that, thank you for calling or, you know, so just that little personal touch was helpful. We, it's hard to do that every week. We have worked with Nadia and Kim on you know, our health coaching idea, which I've shared, but just a one call at the beginning um, mm-hmm. seems to help a little bit mm-hmm. so that they know there's a person on the other end and it's not like a robot or, you know. Right. Are you, um, so are you using health coaches to make those calls, Greg, or is it okay to just 
have like a student intern? Or... Yeah, I think anyone could make the call. We are, um, they are kind of made by trained our trained team, but not necessarily. They're not doing any coaching. They're just basically checking in, making sure there's no any questions. Um, and a lot of times people do have questions, you know, like what about the book or about how to get started. So yeah, it's a little bit just that personal touch seems to help. Right. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Anyone else have any ideas for Karen? And Karen, just to let you know, this is, you're not alone in this struggle. I think cracking the code on that will um, be amazing. Um, this is Caitlin from New York. So we have worked with some YMCAs to do the enhanced program in the portal. And um, during a recent call, I learned that one of the leaders have, has found it really helpful to work with those participants when they come in person to those optional group walks, um, just to touch base to, again, like Greg had said, are you having any issues logging in? Is it you forgot your password or something like that? Um, and they've found that just using the diary feature in the participant guidebook, their physical guidebook, um, and logging it there. And then if they need the leader to help them enter that data um, at the end of the week, they can help them do that. So they're still tracking it. They're just reporting it a little later than maybe they would like to. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, great. Thanks, Caitlin. Yeah, you know, I've got to admit, I'm I'm a pen and paper person, so I I like I would prefer to keep track of it um, on a sticky note and then add it into the portal at the end of the week. So I totally get that. Yeah, it's interesting. I think that the bottom line on a lot of this is that as much as we want to automate and, you know, quote unquote, make things easier for people to register and do a program, um, at the end of the day, the, the personal touch of being able to talk to someone or email someone um, is, can kind of make or break it, the experience for some people. So um, yeah, that's interesting. Anyone else have questions or comments, highlights? Okay, well, we are just about at the top of the hour. And um, as always, just email me with any of your ideas or concerns or anything. Uh, I'm always here to support and problem solve, brainstorm, all of that. Um, our next call will be Monday, August 15th. I hope you all have a wonderful summer. I hope you have some plans for some R&R &R and um, I hope you all just stay healthy and enjoy yourselves. Thanks for joining. Thank you. Thank you. Bye everyone. Bye, everyone. Thanks, Serena.